Hey there, so today I wanna to talk to you about my DIY PVC greenhouse two years later. It was really one of the first things that I built on the farm here and I've learned a lot uh, because of it and I've also grown a lot of food in it. And so today I wanna to talk about some of the things, you know, they're going right, they're going wrong, reasons why you probably shouldn't uh, use a DIY sort of setup for a greenhouse, uh, what I've learned from that. And then I got a couple things I gotta fix and just give you a couple updates about you know how it's been holding up over time and that sort of thing. But as I started thinking about making this video, I started looking up some old photos. So here are some old photos of when I first built it and it's also really cool to see because there's like no farm here. This is like the first thing I put in, so check this out. I made a whole video about it last year to show all the details about it. So if you have any questions about how it was built or my thoughts about it a year ago, please check out this video here. Uh, I just wanna update you guys on how it's been holding up over two years and you know some things that it needs attention to right now and, and all that kind of stuff. So just to give you guys a refresher, this is a 12 foot wide by 48 foot long tunnel. And the reason for those dimensions are <clears throat> I used uh, 20 feet of PVC electrical conduit, the gray stuff to build the hoops. And so 20 feet, when you put it at 12 feet wide, gives you a height that's okay. Um, I really wish this was taller. I wish it was bigger. Uh, it's one, all those kinds of things. And the biggest thing is I wish I had bought a kit from the beginning. This is really just like, it works. At the time I thought I was saving money, I really didn't save much money. And I did talk about that in that other video. But you know, it is holding up and you know, greenhouse plastic is good for uh, four years, so we're two years in, and the plastic looks great. I got it from Bootstrap Farmer, and I will leave a link down below if you guys are interested in checking out that's their plastic, and they also sell a lot of other cool stuff there too. Um, but yeah, it's been holding up fine. One thing is uh, over here with the, with the side walls, and let me show you that. That's really the thing I need to address today. Pretty much everything in the tunnel's been cool. Uh, the one thing that hasn't worked very well is the side walls, and that's because I didn't attach them very well, and I'm gonna talk about that right now. Um, I have these roll-up sides, and you can see it's like totally detached. Um, this is three-quarter inch electrical conduit, and they're just 10 foot pieces that are coupled together. We got a 90 here and a sweep. You buy all the stuff at Home Depot or Lowe's. Again, I did cover this in that other video. But what happens is I have these little plastic clips here, and they're made for three-quarter inch electrical conduit. And they go on and they work great, but eventually they work their way off. Um, they worked great for about a year, and then they just sort of loosened up a little bit. So if you watch the video I did about the um, the high tunnel at Raleigh City Farm, we did we bought the bigger clips because we were using different, you know, pipe, but put it on and th throw a screw through there. And so I'm going to do that today because these these are just not holding anymore, and I probably should have done that from the beginning. The other thing I would like to do is to tie the rope zigzag across the side to keep the side walls from bouncing out. I did that at the Raleigh City Farm greenhouse too. Again, this was like, I threw this up before I had really any farming experience and was just trying to DIY it and piecemeal it together from stuff I could buy locally. Uh, I think I bought everything from Lowe's or Home Depot except for the plastic. So yeah, I think the first thing I gotta do today is get this attached because we have some storms rolling through um, tonight and tomorrow morning. And I just wanna make sure that this is tidied up because uh, one thing you want to make sure when you have a big storm, a lot of wind, uh, is that the greenhouse is completely closed. Because if it's open, the wind can come in and just rip the plastic off. So that's one thing. So I'm going to get that done and then I'll show you some other stuff. All right, so what do you need to get this done? Um, you need a drill, self-tapping screws, those little clamps. And if you don't have these like specific clamps, you can probably just use a piece of pipe or tubing and just cut out, the, cut out a section. And that would probably work just as well. And then something to space the pipe off of the edge of the tunnel. And so if you watch that greenhouse video I did at Raleigh City Farm, I used a pair of pliers, but um, it, that was a little bit too long for me here. So I just got a piece of wood. So essentially, just whatever you're doing, just be consistent about it. So I'm just lining this up with the top here, with the pipe, and then I'm gonna throw my clamp on here like that. I'm just gonna work my way down and not screw anything in yet. I'm gonna put all the clamps on and make sure that it rolls up straight. Because then if there's any adjustments that need to be made, now's the time to do it before you drive the screws in.
Well, I don't know if you can see that during the time loss, but the, some of the clamps just kept on popping off. So um, let's see how we did here. All right, so it looks like it's rolling up higher on this end, and I think that's from all this extra material here. You can, I don't know if you guys can see, but it's bunching up quite a bit here, so let me address that. So it was moving up and down pretty nicely, except these clamps just kept on slipping and causing things to move around because they have like no holding power at this point. So we're just gonna start screwing them in. So again, keep the spacer, get it tight, going down and across, get your clamp on. I'm using this to hold it up while I screw it. And then self-tapping screw. There you go, move on to the next one. Got all those clamps and screws in, let's see how we did here. I'd say that's pretty good. I think that'll definitely work. So, glad to have gotten that taken care of. It's one of those things that's been driving me crazy for a while and I just had a low priority list. But sometimes, you just gotta put in a little bit of time to save yourself a lot more time later. Just get things working right. So how's the inside of the tunnel working out? Well, I did switch up the layout a couple times in here and I'm down to three 36 inch beds with 18 inch walkways and a little bit of extra space on the sides. And this works well for a 12 foot wide tunnel. Um, I do like the 30 inch better than the 36 inch, but I wanted to try it out and it sort of made more sense in this context here. Um, one thing is that I, you know, when I was doing my research about this is that the, the gray conduit is for electrical stuff and this stuff is uh, more UV resistant than the white stuff and it actually does say sunlight resistant on it. And it has held up pretty well. I don't see any stresses or anything on the, uh, on the hoops. And the other thing to keep in mind if you're putting plastic, greenhouse plastic over PVC is that there is some sort of chemical reaction that happens between the PVC and the plastic. Um, and so you have to either paint it or tape it. I use duct tape and it seems to be holding up really well after two years. It's a little bit stuck on there, but I'm looking at the plastic that where it's touching the PVC or the, the tape that's touching the PVC right, right up right up the top. And uh, I don't see any damage to the greenhouse plastic. So that is definitely working out pretty well. Well, if you guys have been following along, you know that I planted food in here for my family and also neighbors and friends. And things have been growing great in here. Obviously growing in a tunnel is so much easier than growing outside. We got red Russian kale, some green onion, some lettuce, some string beans and some patty pan squash and a couple of cucumbers down there. And this bed is almost full. This bed, I'm gonna be putting eggplants, tomatoes, and more cucumbers in. So I'm gonna utilize the height here. But just wanted to give you guys a little update on the greenhouse, um, not just what's growing in here, but also just how the structure is doing. And again, if you haven't seen uh, that video, go check out the other one, I go into all the details. The only thing I forgot to mention is that the hoops are four feet apart. I think that's the one thing I forgot to mention. So one thing that was super tricky about building this greenhouse here was that I'm on a hill and so everything's sloped and I wasn't about to like terrace it out. So it does work. Uh, and I, one thing I really was serious about was getting it as rigid as possible, especially I was worried about the PVC. I used inch and a half PVC, but it's very well structured in that it has wood end walls. It also has hip boards along the sides and a purlin pipe down the middle. So it is a pretty rigid structure and I haven't had any problems with it in terms of that, it still feels very solid. The end wall's been holding up pretty well. The doors, you know, kind of rubs at the bottom. I could probably brace this, you know, on the door, but you know, I can still open and close the door fairly easily. And starting to get weathered. Uh, there was a mixture of pressure treated and non-pressure treated. You can see this stuff starting to, you know, show, show its age, show two years here. But, you know, it's not an airtight greenhouse. I mean, there's a gap here and here, but it's okay. I mean, it doesn't get super cold here. And in the winter time, I usually put row cover over the beds inside the tunnel to give it a little bit extra protection. Uh, let me show you some other stuff. So as I mentioned, I was trying to be as frugal and DIY as possible with this, buying parts from Home Depot or Lowe's and just do it as cheaply as I can and just slapping this up. And, you know, it did. It does work. It's not great. That's sort of the, the takeaway from this after two years. So here, for example, this is how I attach the plastic to the hip board. The hip board is the board that runs along the side here. I have a one by four that's attached to all the hoops. These are one by twos. 
So the pla this, this one by two is screwed to the one by four at the top. The plastic goes over and down, and then this one is put over the plastic, holding it tight, and then this is screwed in so that this whole edge is holding down the plastic, not just a couple of screws. It is definitely holding pretty well. I don't see it loosening up anywhere. There's like one board down here that's kind of bowing out a little bit, but you know, this stuff's starting to show its age and we'll see how long it lasts. So yeah, these DIY jobs, you know, you think you'd be saving yourself a little bit of money. And in fact, I don't think I did even save myself any money because of uh, all the little things I had to add on. But you know, it's the day to day stuff that really adds up time. It's like, oh, reclamping this or this thing's flapping around or you just, you don't enjoy using it every day. And that, that's important. So I don't know, it does work. Uh, I did get a lot of use out of it and I'm gonna be growing food in here for our family this year. So I'm, I'm obviously leaving it. Uh, and this thing, the way I put it in the ground, it, I can't move it. So it is where it is. So as you guys can probably also see, there's a bunch of weeds growing around the outside of the greenhouse and I haven't mulched around here in a while. And so I'm going to be doing that. I have a bunch of wood chips in my driveway, which I can use and I need to also get them out of my driveway. So that does a couple of things. One is uh, it's aesthetically pleasing having it mulched around the outside. It kind of defines the space, but the, the extra benefit is for weed suppression because if you remove the weeds, put down a bunch of heavy dose of wood chips, it'll keep a lot of the weeds from coming into the greenhouse on the side. I often see weeds creeping in on the inside perimeter of the greenhouse. So anything you can do to prevent that is a good idea. Well guys, I just want to give you a little update on the greenhouse here. I know it's really cool to see that kind of stuff when you see videos and projects and then you get an update later and see how it really went and how it weathered over the course of time. So if you're interested in getting a kit, I highly recommend Farmers Friends Greenhouses and I will leave a link down below. No affiliation with them whatsoever, but it seems like everyone's buying them and everyone seems happy with them. Anyways guys, thanks so much for watching. Please hit subscribe. It is greatly appreciated if you could do that. We'll see you tomorrow.